Let's move on to the night game, 8.20 p.m. Eastern, San Francisco 49ers, 7-3, and 3-2 three, three and on the road at Seattle Seahawks, 6-4, 4-1 at home at Lumen Field, Seattle, Washington, 42 Fahrenheit, clear, 5 miles per hour. Let's take a look at the line history here for this one. We have the Seahawks at plus 7 right now at home, plus 7. This opened up as they opened up as 6-point dogs. They're now 7-point dogs. There was a time when this plus seven was at minus 127. It's down to minus 112. I mean, it just seems like it's nonstop 49er cash coming in. When I watch the Seahawks, I've been like, this is not a very good football team. Uh, but, you know, their record is pretty good. Uh, they went into Detroit earlier in the year and beat the Lions. Uh, they've done some impressive things. This total is sitting at 42 and a half. There was a time when these two teams played where I'd be so confident in unders. The Niners have changed a little bit in their makeup uh, offensively. They just seem so much stronger than in years past. This total opened up at 43 and a half. It's it's at about a 43 right now. It says 42 and a half, but the over is minus 117 and the under is plus 102. Terry Walker says San Francisco. Doug says Seattle will be up for this game. You're right. Seattle will be up. They're going to care a lot about this football game. Uh, from a cash flow perspective here for the final game of our Thursday night Thanksgiving games, 80% of the tickets, 81% of the cash on the Niners. We know they're going to be a very, very public road favorite. 75% of the tickets, 90% of cash on the under. So Niners coming off a 27-14 win at home over the Buccaneers. They outgained the Bucs 420 to 287. Brock Purdy was excellent. He was very good. 21-25, 333 yards, three touchdowns, no picks. Him and Joe Montana, only Niners quarterbacks, to post the perfect passer rating in a game with at least 15 attempts. Purdy over his last two games, 78.4% completions, 629 yards, six touchdowns, and no interceptions. He threw five interceptions in that three-game losing streak. Ayuk, monster, five catches for 156 yards and touchdown. Kittle caught eight for 89 and touchdown. McCaffrey ran 21 times, 78 yards, and, of course, he got – a touchdown again after not getting one for the first time in a 49ers uniform uh, in the regular season. Uh, so he took care of business. Uh, they were four of 10 on third down. That's right around where they are over the year. Sixth in the league, converting third downs 44.3% of the time. They were two of four uh, against the Bucks in the red zone. And the Buccaneers have the best red zone defense in the NFL. So that's not, you know, that's tough. Uh, they're tied for sixth in the red zone offense, scoring touchdowns 60% of the time. They were able to convert third downs. The Buccaneers were able to convert third downs, which was a surprise. Uh, both teams went 7-14. to 14. The Niners' defense is ranked just 23rd in the NFL, allowing opponents to co convert 40.9% of the time. The pass rush looked strong. Four sacks, eight quarterback hits. They held the Bucs to 2-4 in the red zone. They're 18th in the NFL, allowing opponents to score touchdowns on 54% of their chances. So we have a Niners' defense that's 23rd, 23rd in third down defense, 18th in red zone defense, just lost Talanoa Hufunga for the rest of the season. It's possible that the Niners' defense is overrated. That's what I th I'm starting to feel about this group. And losing Hofanga, it so, hurts them so bad. He's so phenomenal in pass defense. Uh, he's just a phenomenal football player. It's a big mm -hmm. loss. Seahawks, Seahawks coming off a 17-16 loss at the Rams. Geno Smith, 22-34 for 233 yards and a touchdown. He left the game getting hit in the third quarter, a hit from Aaron Donald. Uh, he's listed as questionable, but Carroll says he's going to be good to go and not to be concerned. Uh, DK Metcalf caught five passes for 94 yards and one touchdown. Kenneth Walker left the game in the first quarter with an oblique injury. Right now, Carroll said he's not a candidate for the IR, but he's going to miss time. He won't be playing, so it'll be the Charbonnet show. Uh, he had 15 carries for 47 yards, caught six for 22. Uh, the Seahawks, these stats, I mean, we go over them each week, and they're bad. They're just so bad, these stats. Not the team, but these stats are bad. They're 30th on third down all year. They convert 31.7% of third downs. They are 22nd in red zone offense. They score touchdowns 48.6% of the time. And, this, and it's even worse when we get to their defense. Now, their defense held... The Rams, 123 yards in the first three quarters of the game, held them to 267 total yards, held them to two of nine on third down. They're 29th in the league defensively on third down, 29th. In the red zone, they're 28th in the league defensively. I mean, it, it doesn't matter. It's hard to find stats where the Seahawks are a good football team. 
I guess unless you look at their win-loss record. Uh, Jamal Adams set out with a knee injury. And then Jarek Reed, the second. So safety, Jamal Adams out with a knee injury. Then Jarek Reed, the second, is done for the season after tearing his ACL in the second half. So Carroll said that he thinks Adams will be able to play Thursday night against the 49ers. He thinks that Adams will be able to play against 49ers. Take it away for us here, Troy. Niners, Seahawks. Man, this Seattle team is just a one-way ticket for me. They they fit into the fraudulent bad category along with the Giants. Uh, the Giants still from last year. I knew they. Were, I feel like I knew what the Giants were. I talked about it a lot earlier in the season. The Vikings actually got upgraded from fraudulent bad to fraudulent average with the Jags and the Saints and the fraudulent good teams. Well, I don't want to beat a dead horse, but the Chiefs fall first in that category. But this this um the Seahawks team they have a poor offensive line allowing top five pressure rate, one of the worst tackling teams in the NFL. And that pressure rate, a lot of that's driven by Geno Smith and his his inability in the pocket, um, especially recently. That's what's been happening. They're 30th in the NFL, like you said, on third down, 30% conversion rate, bottom third in the red zone red zone offense. And Geno Smith, this man needs a clean pocket to throw to throw from. And one thing I want to continue to beat home is strength of schedule. I like to look at it a lot. I think it's very important to kind of benchmark where this team should be. They've had the weakest strength of schedule. I've said it before. I don't think this team ends up making the playoffs. That means they're only going to win two more games this season, three at most, in my opinion. I do not think this game is going to be one of them because what I just talked about, those five metrics, it's not the formula for success versus the Niners. We have the best graded pass rush in the NFL versus a bad offensive line in Geno Smith. And, you know, Geno Smith, he's he's starting to become this quarterback that people believe in. And they, they, they like the story of the Seattle Seahawks. They like the coach. I feel like they're just gravitate, gravitate towards this guy who's been a journeyman. And now he's kind of developed into a player that – is he a you know is he a starting quarterback in the NFL? I don't think so, um, because if you want to beat the Niners, like I said, uh, this is not the formula. Uh, one of the most efficient red zone offenses in the NFL, and players that make you know, they'll punish bad tackling defenses, and that's exactly what the Seattle Seahawks team is. They grade out as one of the worst tackling defenses, and I think that all the playmakers on this uh, 49er offense will completely expose them. Uh, yeah, if you want to beat the Niners, you run the ball, you stop the run. I don't think Seattle will be able to do either. And usually I wouldn't like the 49ers in this spot because if you look at what they got on deck, they got the Eagles on the road in a freaking, you know, NFC championship revenge game. But this is for first place in the division. Let's not forget the Seahawks right now. We're lucky to be one game behind the San Francisco 49ers. I think they know it. And I think they're going to come out ready. And this spread being where it is says it. That to be true. Since 2018, road favorites between minus six and minus seven, 17 and 12 ATS at 60%, 26 and four on a teaser. But if it's after week 10, when we start to know who these teams are as you know complete units, 14 and five ATS, 73%, 18 and one on a teaser leg. Most importantly, road favorites on Thanksgiving since 2004 are 24 and one straight up, 19 and six ATS. The 49ers have covered three straight games in a row against this team. Two times as a home as a home favorite of more than a touchdown, and this game as a road favorite. And last time they were, they were minus three, now they're minus six and a half. More line functionality in favor of the San Francisco 49ers. So I did. I moved heavy on the 49ers, especially on the teaser leg with the Browns. So I got the Browns up to eight and a half. I got the 49ers down to a half minus a half because I took it at six and a half. Because I also bet the spread. You know, this is how I play these games. I bet the sides, and I bet the teasers. So I got both. So you have Browns, 49ers in a teaser. You have the Niners minus six and a half as well. And minus 112. Niners minus six and a half, minus 112. What is your feeling on the total in this one? Uh, I, I fully, after listening to Pete Carroll talk, there's just a, a pretty calm about Geno Smith playing. He's not going to practice. He'll play Thursday. Uh, what is your feeling on this total at this point? Well, if Gino's beat up at all at this point and this 49ers pass rush starts to get after him, it's not going to look pretty for the Seahawks or Geno Smith. My feeling on the total is that I really don't have a feel. I haven't dug into it enough because I'm so heavy on the side. But if I was to take anything, it'd be the under. But when you take it to the database, total starts moving down. This is where the market is inefficient. It almost feels trappish. I talk about the sharp trap. This almost feels like one of those spots. 
you know, I, you know, and I'm going to talk about a spot later where I like a total to go under because it moved over, moved to the over in the same range. Um, so this is just the opposite of that, the vice versa. So I really don't have a good feel. I do not know if I'm going to have pre-flop action in this game. I think I may just look towards live action on our live stream. But I can understand being on the 49ers. I just uh, – I have a – this is a – you know, a huge game for the Seahawks. And you talked about the Niners having the Eagles on deck. I just for the I worry a little bit about selling the Seahawks at the floor, even though I do not think they're a good team. Right. I do can I do have a little bit of concern on that. I, I don't know if I move here pre flop, but I like the idea of being able to I, I know for a fact in this case people are gonna look at the Seattle Seahawks and see value in the number itself. Whether it be sharp action or recreational action, it doesn't matter to me. All that matters to me is that there's money on the other side because the 49ers are going to wipe the floor with this team. And right now it's just 19% of the tickets and 19% of the cash. And we have a decent amount of sample size of tickets at this point, 27,000. 